it's Darren from Moonhair Studio again and today I'm going back to my series on living with the Qcom Pro X. Um, this seems to have generated quite a lot of interest on the channel and today I want to look at how I've got my Qcom set up so that it boots up pretty much straight away every time I open Cubase because I did have some problems with that at the at the start um, and also to look at the fader bank how you operate all those controls and the motorized faders and ways that I work with those during a project and I think um, this will be the first in you know a few that I'll, I'll take different parts of the QCon and have a look at the way they've integrated into my workflow and hopefully that will help you out but uh, let's get started on this first one then. So when I first set up my QCon Pro I had it plugged into a USB hub, a USB 2 hub. Um, it's a USB 2 machine so I assume that that would work okay but Cubase crashed within two or three minutes uh, every time I was working with it. So I plugged it direct into a USB 2 port on my laptop and again I still seem to have uh, sort of real stability issues. So in the end I used a USB 3 port direct in, not through one of my hubs and that seemed to really sort things out. <clears throat> now if you don't know the difference between a USB 3 and a USB 2 port, USB 3 is coloured blue and a USB 2 is coloured black. Now the other thing that I've realised when I've been starting up my system is always turn the QCon on first. So make sure that that's booted up then go into Cubase or your door so you can open that up then and what will happen is that as soon as it picks up Cubase the master fader will move there it goes and you know that it's actually set up um, and it's registered that Cubase is there. If you don't see any kind of movement, and I have had that in the past, um, then it means that it really hasn't picked up that your door is open. So my suggestion there is close your door down, start it again, and generally it'll work. But as I say, with those USB port connections sorted out, I haven't had any problems since then. Right, there are two main reasons why you would really want to buy a motorized mixing desk for your home studio. The first one is that your faders are always going to be in the right place. They're always going to represent what you've got actually on your screen here. So as you move through your various groups, the faders move to the positions that are correct for that particular instrument. Now that is an advantage over a, um, a passive desk in that if say uh, my Fender bass guitar here, um, the physical fader was down the bottom but the actual fader on the door was at the top then as soon as I hit touch the fader it could either completely lower the volume uh, with a sudden jump or even if it's set up so that it will pick up as you move through the correct position you're still then having to think oh where is it I'm, and I've got to play catch up so that's really useful. The second reason is it just looks bloody cool doesn't it I mean let's face it it's great to see the the faders moving up and down by themselves and I mean how many of us could have thought we would have been able to afford a motorized desk even just sort of five or ten years ago these things are you know now becoming the standard so um, yeah no really really good to have that facility there now Automation is one reason why it's useful to have a, a desk like this. So uh, we'll take the example of, of the fender there. I'm just going to use the dedicated mixer button to close the mixer and just get myself to a position in the song where we can do some uh, automation. So we can step up and down through my marker tracks which are up here um, using these dedicated previous and next buttons. So we'll just um, zap back a, a little way so to here. Um, start playing. Now I've got a good little transport bar here, very useful. Um, so let's hit the right button on the, on the bass. Just sort of bring that out. Back up again. And if we stop that. 
Now we'll use the jog wheel to go back. The jog wheel is lovely on the QCon. It's it's really solid feeling um, and it's it's quite intuitive, um, really useful. And you can see as I'm jogging through, it's actually jogging through the automation of the um, uh, that I've just put in on the mixer. So we just go back. As soon as you stop, it sets to the right position. If we play now, we can see that. Now the one thing that has been picked up on um, is the sound that the faders, the motorized faders make as they move up and down. Obviously there's a motor in there, it's dragging the, the fader up and down and you are going to get some mechanical noise. Now it's not um, you know, a huge amount of noise, doesn't actually bother me. But I can see the point that if you're in a very um, low section of the song where there's not much going on, so you're, you're not hearing an awful lot coming through your speakers, um, that could be, you know, a little bit irritating, I suppose. So if you're listening back to a mix, you're not actually doing any automation or anything and you just want to listen to it without the faders going up and down, you've got a dedicated button here, a motor button just click that and now when we uh, move through there you can see that the uh, automation is not affecting that fader if you want it back on just turn it on and it'll do exactly what you did so you've got the option there if you want to if you want your desk to be quiet just turn that motor off now on each channel you've got dedicated um, mute and solo buttons we're just going to uh, undo that automation I just did. Uh, we have a dedicated undo and redo button on here as well. Very useful. We'll take right and read off as well. So um, yeah, as we're going through, you can solo out your instrument, have a closer listen to it. Mute it, get rid of it entirely. We've got a record arm button here. That automatically record arms as you select different tracks. Um, I haven't done it on the vocals there. I think that might be the vocal group rather than vocals. Yeah, it is. Um, so it'll it'll arm any instrument tracks um, or audio tracks as you go through. Um, that's just Cubase doing that. It's not the icon itself. So you, you know you can set that. Um, you can preset that if you want. Uh, remember that you can select tracks just by touching the faders as well. And then the other thing that you've got at the top here um, is your pan pot. Um, in fact, that's a, a, a function pot. Can be assigned to all sorts of things. But today we'll just deal with panning. Um, so if we move to a section of the song where we really have very little going on except for the uh, drum and bass so we just go to this oh it's already on there and play this section here i can pan hard right hard left exactly where you want a bass guitar to be hard left yeah. now that's fine if you just want to set your um, level and actually as you go across the little LED strips do um, show you where you are on your panning to a certain extent um, but uh, we're just uh, let's just get that back to uh, center roughly now if you want to do some real sort of sudden panning there's quite a lot of travel there and it would be quite tricky to do that so if we go back to the beginning of that section so we'll go to our, um, our previous and play that again there's a button here which you can press to actually change from the pots to the fader so it swaps these two over so if I press that now you see all the faders are center because this is now pan control and that means that you can do some really very rapid panning and actually I wasn't on the right section there we'll go back a bit and try that again so you could do some pretty quick movements if um, you, know, you just didn't want to um, use that and again just press it again and you're back to normal so your panning is up there so those are the basics um, to do with the channel strips and um, in future videos I'll 
cover a bit more detail about this section here. Um, there's lots that you can do and there's quite a few different controls here which are programmed ready and good to go. Um, but for now I think that'll do for this one and um, if you've enjoyed this video then please do have a look at the other ones um, that I've put on the uh, QCon, Cubase and, and other studio bits and pieces. You can like and subscribe if you're into that sort of thing. I, I don't ask it of people, um, but uh, I will see you on the next one. And um, until then, have a good one.